Well, in the last video, uh, we got to this point here with uh, Rod Webb's um, jug painting uh, on the left-hand side here, and the Photoshop version on the right-hand side over here. Um, what we're now going to do is to attempt to go um, the next step to this point here, uh, which is Rod's uh, final version before adding background um, uh, color. One of the problems I'm finding here is that the, the background is uh, kind of a, a greeny blue color which tends to vary a little bit. I'm not sure if that's due to the light in Rod's studio or whether he painted some uh, light wash on the on the background beforehand, but uh, this is sort of interfering with the colors uh, when I paint here. Um, so it's a little bit difficult to get the colors to match exactly, but you know, within these constraints, we can fire ahead. So, first of all, we're going to put some shadow uh, on the left hand side of the mug, and we're going to pick a, a light gray color for that, and uh, as usual. Our uh, wash wet brush, make it a little bit smaller. Uh, the past is probably okay, and just uh, darken it a little bit like this. Not very much, maybe a little bit darker, smaller than that, and just very much lightly on the on the edge like that. <coughs> we now just soften it a little bit with a smudge. Like that. What we now need to do is to add a bit more rust around here, and uh, to do that, what we'll do is pick our uh, soft squirrel, and um, I'm going to set the uh, mode to multiply <coughs> to get a little bit more darkness in our paint, and um, I'm just going to put a bit of color around here like this, something like this. A bit more here, and um, maybe a little bit more around here. I can't remember exactly where uh, Rod put the color, but it just looking quickly, it seems to me that there could be something like this here, maybe a bit more here, like that. Perhaps a little bit more around here. Okay, I've gone a little bit heavy around here, so I'm going to pick the smudge tool and basically add a little bit of water to it, just to soften it a bit like this here. Just like that. What he now does is to add a few spots to show where the enamel has broken through, and um, what we'll do is pick the wet rigger for that, uh, pick our um, dark color, and uh, add a little bit. Um, in some areas like this here, uh, over here. A little bit careful doing this, not to be too much. Like this. Maybe darken this a little bit here, a little bit. A bit more here. Just around here. Just down here a bit. That sort of thing. So just go ahead and do that. And see, is there anywhere else? A little bit, and perhaps a few bits around here. Okay. Something like that. Rod now adds a bit of uh, rust color to the inside of the jug and for that I'm going to use the uh, soft squirrel brush and a usual background color here or, or orangey color, rusty color, something like that. And a uh, bit around here. Like that. A bit darker here. Darker down here. Darken it a bit up here and around here. So 
something along those lines. That's probably okay. And now um, uh, pick the uh, drippy water and just drop the opacity down to about 30% and just just size a little bit and a little bit add a little bit of water to, to this soften it a bit make it run a little bit like this just like that I'm now going to paint the shadow area here and I'm going to use the wet rig for that and uh, rods mixture here so um, I'm just going to make this bigger so I can see it better. See why the line is even a bit bigger than this. I like this. I think the line is just down here like that. It's a very delicate line as you can see. So very gently go like this along here. Darken the center bit a bit. A bit more like this. Maybe a bit more in the center like this. Maybe also here. Okay, let's have a look. That's not too bad. So let's pick the smudge tool, make it a very low opacity, and just very gently smudge it like that. Uh, we could possibly make it a little bit darker, but I think I'll leave it like that for the moment. If we want to uh, darken something like this, uh, quite often instead of uh, having to paint over it, what we can do is simply to duplicate the layer and uh, immediately see that you've got a tremendously darkened and then by reducing the pasta to something, let's say like this, um, I think we get quite a nice effect. So these are the kind of, kind of shortcuts that uh, we can use very effectively in Photoshop. What I'm now going to do is to paint the shadow area here. And uh, first of all, I'm just going to pick uh, uh, some yellow because the, the yellow and the uh, blue and the red will make kind of a black color. So uh, the next thing, uh, let's just put some French ultramarine down. Bit more down here, here too, and uh, then some red to kind of, as Rod says, make it warmer. Bit more down here, some more ultramarine down here, quite a bit Over here too. Bit less up here. Some more red. You can see the colors getting quite dark down here. So this is a matter of judgment, and I'm not going to do a lot more than this, but maybe just a bit more very dark uh, ultramarine down here. Maybe a little bit more down here, like this. Darken this a little bit here. Okay. Well, we're now pretty much at the end of this phase. We just need to darken uh, this area a little bit. Uh, so we'll uh, pick uh, light gray and the wash brush and um, <coughs> just darken this a little bit like this and down here too. Like that. So we now need to go to the final bit of the painting, which is um, this. And um, <clears throat> as you can see, it's largely uh, some shadow areas, some merging of the uh, jug and the shadow here, and um, some little detail over here. And that's about it, I think. Yes, also some rust spots around here. Um, 
maybe a bit more darkness here that's I think that's it well <clears throat> the first thing I'm going to do is pick this much tool uh, drop the pass to about 40 percent and uh, soften these edges here because they're way way too strong really and uh, we won't do them too much yet we can always do it a bit more later on so we'll stick to our um, bluey gray color here and uh, the wash brush but quite a bit higher opacity because we need quite a bit darker color here and um, I'm going to darken the uh, the gray quite a lot for the same reason so let's see what this looks like if we put some here I think that's quite good maybe it'll make it a little bit bigger like this down here <coughs> I'm not sure if this is too strong or not, but let's uh, maybe smudge it a bit. I think that's okay. We need to you lose the edge down here a little bit, so I'm just going to. I'm on the wrong layer. Smudge it a bit. Something like this. Just let it kind of merge in there a bit <clears throat> perhaps a little bit around here too something like that right because we want to find a soft edge here I think looking at Rod's painting we might wish to lighten the uh, shadows a little bit so if we pick um, the eraser tool and reduce the opacity even further to five percent and a little bit like that might give <coughs> a little bit more texture i'm trying to you know be a little bit like uh, rod's painting of course picking the smudge tool here um but <coughs> um which is always a little bit more difficult than if you're doing it yourself because you're trying to copy what someone else has done anyway uh, what we now need to do is to put some of these rust spots and we're nearly done so let's put some of these uh, rust spots in for that I'll pick the um, wet rigger and I'm going to start here put this a little bit here and then uh, gently uh, this is a, an area where I think the um, I'm just going to smudge this a little bit because it's a bit bigger. Like that. Okay. Well, um, and uh, let's make this a bit bigger and uh, put some uh, rust spots here or dark spots here. Something like that. Um, I might actually just put a little bit of a line down here because. We've lost a little bit of the edge there. Give a bit more definition to the shadow. <coughs> Where else? Well, there's not a lot to do, is there? We could do some stuff here. I think that's okay. The last thing we could do is maybe soften some of these uh, edges a little bit here because really. The shadow is hardly likes to be quite as hard as that. So a little bit of softening like this. And here. And I can see that uh, in fact Rod has put a, a blue uh, shadow here which you know is probably quite a good idea. Um, and um, But I'm not going to do that because I think uh, the the whole thing is um, we can soften maybe a little bit up here and sort of thing but we're into kind of real detail now that <coughs> is uh, as much a question of taste as anything else 
And the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to run the edges um, action uh, just to see. It may not do much good, but it's always worth a try. So let's run it. Now, you can see if I turn it, uh, turn off the edges layer, it's like this. Turn it on, it's like this. So there are really very, very few edges uh, to this uh, painting anyway. Um, <clears throat> And some of the ones that uh, the edges have created, we may wish to get rid of. But the effect, essentially, if I turn it off again, is to give more uh, local contrast as much as anything else. So that's pretty good. And it also gives us a, a cleaner edge here, which if we wished, we could uh, strengthen. Um, it may be that it's adding some edges here that we don't want, so all we need to do then is to smudge that out like that and we can get rid of it. This is quite nice here, I think, because it gives a sort of uh, a little... Sometimes it's nice to have a few little edgy bits, um, so I won't take that off. Maybe a little bit too much here, so I might remove that a bit, and uh, this kind of stuff. Maybe a little bit too much here, but anyway, you know, it's uh, it's fine the way it is. So there we are. Um, <clears throat> it's not uh, certainly the same. Let's get rid of the mixer pads. Um, for one thing, we've got different color background, which has you know colored the whole uh, image differently. But um, I think it's a reasonably good attempt. Uh, it could certainly soften a few things around here and so on. But um, there you are. Well, to finish off, let's paint the table after all. Uh, we'll pick the wash wet and the smudge drippy water. Uh, we'll set the smudge opacity to, sorry, the uh, brush opacity to 80% and the float about 70% because we want quite a lot of uh, color. Um, <coughs> Uh, put down here and let's um, bring the mixer pad back up again and we select the burnt umber and uh, let's put down a bit of paint quite soft uh, like this and uh, <clears throat> let's pick some light red drop the pasta down to maybe 30% and uh, drop in a little bit of color around here like this, give a bit of variation, maybe a bit down here, and let's go back to the burnt umber for a second, leave the pasty fairly low, put a bit of shadow area here, maybe just around here, and uh, like this. Right, so let's now pick the smudge tool, uh, bring the pasty down to about 30%. This is a lovely uh, brush because it it uh, it's just like adding water and letting it flow as you can see. Now we can move it around. So something along those lines. So I hope that this is uh, demonstrated reasonably well that uh, we can do this sort of watercolor painting with Photoshop. Um, it's clearly not quite the same process as uh, traditional painting, but uh, it's not an awful lot. It's not far off, really. Now, the thing is that, of course, this is a very delicate uh, little painting and um, quite precise. <clears throat> and a lot of watercolors are not like that. They're much more fluid, more impressionistic, um, much looser overall. And um, one might think that Photoshop would not be suitable for that sort of painting. Well, that's not the case. Uh, I may do another video later on to demonstrate that, but uh, the, the basic tools that we've got here are really entirely suitable for much, much looser watercolors than these. So I hope you've enjoyed this and uh, that it's inspired you to uh, have a go at the brushes on this site. Thank you very much for watching.